Aloha. In our video today, we would like to talk about sexual orientation and LGBTQ. First of all, what is sexual orientation? Sexual orientation is a person's sexual identity in relation to the gender to which they are attracted. The fact of being heterosexual, homosexual, or bisexual. While majority of the people are heterosexual, meaning they are sexually attracted to people of the opposite sex or gender, for a number of people that is just not the case. Homosexuality, heterosexuality, and bisexuality are the three main categories of sexual orientations. However, these three concepts are very difficult to formulate due to the fact that the situation can be different from person to person. Homosexuality means romantic attractions, sexual attractions, or sexual behavior between members of the same sex or gender. As a sexual orientation, homosexuality is an enduring pattern of emotional, romantic, and or sexual attractions to people of the same sex. Bisexuality is romantic attraction, sexual attraction, or sexual behavior toward both males and females, or romantic or sexual attraction to people of any sex or gender identity. Although putting people in these three categories seems very neat, this creates a lot of problems in our society, such as stereotyping or even discrimination. Many people are taught to have homophobia. Homophobia is an extreme and irrational fear, hatred of the homosexuals, perhaps by society or their religion. People with homophobia believe that the same-sex orientation is a physical and or mental disease. Some people also see homosexuality as a sin. Now, what is LGBTQ? LGBTQ is an acronym that stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer. People of the LGBTQ community are often misunderstood. So, in this video, we would like to explore more on this topic. So when I was in middle school and high school, I was heavily involved in choir and musical theater and anything that had to do with the arts. And because of that, I was able to start meeting people that were part of the LGBTQ community. Um, and I think that it was definitely kind of a shock for me when it first, when I was first introduced to people of that community because I didn't understand it, especially with um, the way that I was raised. You know, I was raised Mormon my whole life and um, being in a Hispanic household, it's not really accepted and it's kind of made fun of um, to a certain extent. So when I first started becoming friends with people that were gay and lesbian, um, I definitely didn't really know how to how to interact and how to how to be friends with them. But um, when I was in high school, I met my best friend Xavier. And at the time, uh, we were freshmen in high school. We were brand new to the school. I had just moved to um, this new city, and I met him. And as soon as I met him, I kind of like had a feeling that maybe he was gay. So naturally, I asked. And at the time, he hadn't come out yet and he hadn't accepted the person that he was so he was very standoffish he was um just really upset that I had asked him that question um and so after that we didn't really get along but a year later we were both in choir and musical theater and he had come out as gay and after after that I started to see the kind of person that you know, he truly was because he wasn't hiding his who he was anymore. And so we became better friends from then on. And I was able to experience certain things by being his friend. I've been able to make observations of the way that others interact with Xavier or my other friends that are part of the LGBTQ community. And a lot of the times um, it's very awkward for other people to be around them. 
um, as if they're a different species, you know. And um, actually, when Xavier and I were juniors in high school, we went to um, homecoming together. And Xavier showed up with a full face of makeup. <laughs> um, he had six inch heels on, and he was super comfortable in the way that he looked. But other people were shocked to see him dressed that way, were shocked to see that he was expressing himself in the way that he was, including my family when they saw him. I think one thing that I did go through um, in high school was just finding um, myself without so many labels, um, so many people telling me, you know, who I was. Um, I went through my own journey, um, and I'm still to this day going through my own, you know, gay journey um, through life. So, um, yeah, through high school, it was a it was a it was a difficult time. Um, not too many bullying experiences, um, just sort of you know like name calling, but I never heard it because a I'm in my own world half the time, or b I'm just not listening, or I'm on my phone. Um, <laughs> so thank you friends for supporting me <laughs> when I didn't hear those comments um, I think in response to other people's experiences um, definitely reach out to people in other communities and different cultures um, you know if you have questions I'm sure there are people who are willing to um, answer those questions um, and you know help help your curiosity grow into something, um, which is understanding of other people. I think that we as a people, like as social workers especially, we need to be more understanding. And something that the book says is that it is vitally important that social workers confront their own homophobia and learn more about the special issues of lesbian and gay clients. Yes, it's hard sometimes to not be awkward when you're around people that do things that you don't understand but it's important to be respectful and be understanding, you know? A lot of the times we're gonna be um, placed with clients that are of different races, different genders, different preferences, you know? And it's our job to help them with whatever it is that they need instead of judging them and making them feel worse about whatever it is that they're going through. Um, in the book, it also mentions conversion therapies and I've been able to experience um, or hear of people's experiences with conversion therapy and how it doesn't work and how a lot of the times it makes you feel um, more depressed and it can lead to suicidal thoughts. Um, and nowadays, I think there's a lot more acceptance that there has been in the past, but still, um, there's a lot of homophobia still and that truly affects people. Um, a lot of the friends that I have that are in the LGBTQ community have experienced homophobia and it's degrading. It's like the language that people use towards people that are gay and lesbian and transgender and bisexual is degrading and it makes them feel like they're less of a person. The most important lesson that we can learn from this chapter is that everyone's different and that we need to be more accepting of people and be more open-minded and understand that people go through their own struggles and their own um, different journeys in life and it should be our job to be respectful of people and be more loving towards everyone else hey guys so i'm just gonna talk a little bit about my friend his name is d-ray parker so d-ray he told me that when he was 13 years old he realized that he, that he liked boys. He also understood at that time that it was different from everyone else. He was scared with this fact that he liked boys because um, in Catholic school he was taught that being gay was a sin, but he just couldn't help it. My friend D-Ray said he would cry at night and ask God why this happened to him. He would beg God to change him. And when, it, when he was in high school, when I was 15 years old, he also attended my high school. Uh, it was our sophomore year. And honestly, like, I never knew that D-Ray was gay. Um, I thought that he was straight. And he was a really good friend of mine, just a really cool guy. We hung out with, with our group of friends and we played sports together. And we even talked about girls together. But 
it was later on, um, the summer before his senior year, before our senior year, that he accepted the fact that he was gay. Um, and after he, he accepted the fact that he was gay, uh, senior year, he, he shared that to others around him. But after that, he said that he went through some hard things that nobody should go through. Uh, some people, they called him a faggot. He was shoved. He was excluded from peers and, and uh, in school and in sports. Some people even stopped talking to him. And others even left notes, uh, really mean notes that, that they left on his locker or in his locker. So such horrible things and I don't know how my friend did it. He said that he that he's glad that he made out made it out, out of it alive <laughs> because uh, lots of people in his situation either die through murder or through suicide. Um, just reading and studying our book, it mentions that suicide rates are really high for those uh, young people who are gay. So my my friend D Ray says he's really grateful to be alive and he's really happy. Through his experience with being gay, he's also experienced many positive things. He's learned to develop a thicker, a thicker skin and watch his back, which gives him an edge in life. He has an acute sense of where he stands in the world as a gay man. He also feels a sense of community within the LGBT community. He says he feels a sense of love, which is unconventional, and helps him make his own rules to, to how relationships are modeled. He says that gay culture always makes for a good time with all the parties and, parties and things that they participate in. I also asked my friend D-Ray to, to share, um, share with others in the world who aren't members of, of the LGBT community to share his thoughts of what he wants us to know. And my friend, these are his words. D-Ray says, we're not monsters, we're not animals, we're not pedophiles. Open your hearts and minds and we may surprise you. LGBT people are some of the most loving, hardworking, intelligent, and talented people in the world. If I listed off qualities of an astounding human being without, would knowing their race, religion, or sexual orientation really change your perspective? Um, and I really like what D-Ray said. You know, if, if somebody were to list off all these great things about a person, what would it matter if their race, their, their religion, or their sexual orientation? I knew D-Ray as being an awesome guy all my life. He's always been a, a really good guy and he's a friend of mine. And nothing will change that. Uh, I think as future social workers and just as people in general, we have to be accepting and loving of others. We don't have to fully understand other people or even accept other people's decisions, but we should support others and we should love others no matter who they are. I'm going to be talking about furthering the LGBT rights movement and what we can do to keep up the progress that has been made so far. So I think it's safe to say that the LGBTQ community and movement has come a long way over the past couple years. Great strides have been made with people and organizations being more accepting of these community members and kids are being taught to be more mindful and better educated in general about what it means to be a member of the LGBTQ community or to love someone who identifies as such. There are a lot of larger scale things that have been done to further the movement, like the legalization of gay marriage in 2015, or educating people on the fact that sexual orientation is not a choice, but a biological component. We've also made progress by creating safe spaces and clubs and institutions that foster a welcoming environment for all. Even though we have come such a long way, there's still quite a ways to go. There's still hate crimes committed towards LGBTQ community members quite often. Kids still feel unsafe or alienated at schools and families are still unaccepting. The list goes on and on. I think that furthering the movement can be as simple as incorporating more mindful behaviors and phrases into our daily lives. Oftentimes we think that furthering the movement means we have to protest or have these crazy gestures, but in general, we can create a lot of change on the personal level. There's still a lot of stigma surrounding the LGBTQ community. So much so that it still is ingrained in everyday lingo and speech. Every time we say, no, that's so gay, or don't be so gay, we're taking away from all the progress that has been made. Saying something as simple as that still reinforces the stigma that, is that it is undesirable or frowned upon to have a different sexual orientation. And that is a very harmful mindset to have. In order to create a safe environment for everyone, we have to make sure that we portray openness in our actions. 
and we need to make sure that we confront those who are using slurs or enforcing harmful stereotypes geared towards members of the LGBTQ community. I believe that progress starts on the individual level, and by doing our part to look out for others, we can create the change that we need and desire.